Ready? Okay, it'll go to tell you the top 24, second column, 15 lines in the end of the page. Okay, now Trebis says that what happened in Mitzrayim, does Nigla Lem Malch Malchem Lochem Akolish Baruchu, Bavor Zahas Hashem Libet Seisim Mitzrayim, because through the mitzvahs is Nibshech and Eplimius. In Mitzrayim, they were able to accomplish it in one day. We need seven days to elevate all seven middays, okay, to be able to have that gilud. And he says, Vizel, 15 lines in the end of the page of 24. Vizel, Bavor Because the Patsik says, Bavor Zah, Asa Hashem Li, Betzeisim in Mitzrayim. And he explained, what does that mean? The gilui of Li was revealed uh, in this day. Yeah, it became internalized in the Li. But then you say, what is Bavur Zeh? When there's Matzim Marder Menachem Lefanechem. When there's Matzim Marder present. What does that mean? Sheidei HaMarder VaMeridus. Mirechu Kemei Hashem. Through the Marder and the bitterness of his distance from Hashem, that itself awakens the Yud Gimel Mida Sarachmi. What does it mean that the Gilui of Li, which is Yud Gimel Mida Sarachmi, yeah, what does it mean that this revelation is Bishoshi Yeshmatu Mar Menachem Lefanecho? So he explains, Marar represents Midirus, bitterness. In other words, not depression, not sadness, bitterness. What's the bitterness? How far the person is away from Hashem. When a person has marar, meaning they feel the distance of what the way they are from Hashem, which is the concept of the longing of tshuva, so then they get the level of yud gemul midas sarachmi. What did he say before? That on Pesach there's a gil of yud gemul midas sarachmi through the level of tshuva. So he says, that's why it can only be revealed when there's matzah, martyr, munachim, lefanecha, when there's martyr, meridus, the bitterness and the distance, meaning that even if he doesn't sin, but he feels far from Hashem because of the distance from Hashem, that awakens you to gimel me the sarachmi. says, Prophesies with the word zeh. Meishe Rabbeinu Gemara says, "Kol anaviim nisnabu b'koi, umeishe nisnabu b'zeh." Meishe Rabbeinu always said, "Zeh hadavod." I should see Hashem. Zeh means you're pointing to it. This, this you mean you're pointing to it, and you say this is it. All the other neviim, all the, the neviim look koi amar Hashem. So Hashem said. So the Gemara says, "Meishe Rabbeinu was a much greater level of nevua." Meish Rabbeinus had the Gilui right in front of him. Zeh. And, and uh, all the other Nevi'im said, Koya Mar Hashem. Vam Shach HaSateira, which is Dam Shach HaSateira. Like it says in Rosh Yamat, is Zeh What? Zeh Even in the Midbar, he's holding the animal and says, Zoh. Last week, here we spoke about that. Vini HaTeira, Nikra Nevel Chachma. Teira is called the flowing of Chachma. Shalemayla, which is above. So it says like this, and that I was going to say in the next line. There's a Pasik about Mashiach, and that day we will say, This is my God. This is the God I was hoping for. So over there it says twice there. So the Medrash says, by, by, by Kriyas Yamsuf, it only says Zekeli Van Vey, which is the Gilu of once Zeh. Ba'yama ba'yama hu hine elokeinu Zeh, kivinu levish, Zeh Hashem kivinu le no gil v'nis mocha b'yishua. See, twice the level of Zeh. By Zeh kivinu b'rabbis. This is what it says in the Medrash, Shilaos and Yemu beis pamim Zeh in elokeinu Zeh. Why? Teira, the Matan Teira is of the revealed Teira. Revealed Teira is Zehadova Shetziva Hashem. But Lo'ozid love is going to be revealed. 
the Teira Hadashim Me'iti Teiti. It's going to be the revelation of Pnei Yisateira, which is a much greater revelation than it is of the regular Teira, of Nigla the Teira. So over there, Lars and Lavi, we're going to say twice that. In other words, now, like the, the Arizal said, Mitzvah Legal is Esa Chochma. It's like sh- Friday afternoon, you have to taste the Shabbos foods. So Friday afternoon of Golos is the revelation at the tasting. Chsidis is the tasting of what's going to be when Mashiach comes. Therefore, in the primary revelation of Chsidis was in the year 5500. Why? Because then it's already Shabbos, Arab Shabbos afternoon, and therefore you start tasting Mashiach. But the ultimate revelation of, of Pnei Mitzatera is going to be after Mashiach comes. Hainai Deshi is Gale, Gamkim Pnei Mitzatera. Now Tera is only what's called Chitzei Mitzatera, the external level of Abba. Mashiach will be the Pnei Mitzatera. But how is that this level revealed when Mashiach comes? It's only going to be revealed through Hayyem La Seisam. Action today. And that's what we say. Meaning, the level of Hayyem La Seisam. Why, why now are we the ones going to bring it? We learned already many times. Now we reveal the level of Elokus, of Tchis, of Mashiach, but it's only in a trust fund. It's not revealed yet. So he says, why now do we do it? And like we learned many times, it says in Chassidus, the expression, that when Mashiach comes, we're going to miss the good old Golis days. We're going to miss, Jews are never happy. Now they want Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, they want Golis. Whatever they want, they'll never, they'll never be happy. What part of the Galut will we miss? The fact that only in the time of Golis, because now we have free choice, because evil and good exist, coexist, and we have to choose good over bad, right. so that's where the accomplishment is. That's if right. you're programmed to do good, then good is not really good. You can't do anything else. Right. So th- th- thank you, you for agreeing. Glory. Huh? If you, I promise you, if you're there, it's not going. If you're there, it's still not going to be boring. Kamei said, "Ain't the satel for the high as a chaim as a mavet a teif as a mavet a sera." And the Torah says, "The bechay to bechay." And it says, "Interesting." That is all right. Listen to this. Mordor is the same gematria as the word mavet. Mem reish reish vav. So reish reish is four hundred, and vav. So you have. Mavis. Is it, Mara equals, that's what that is all right. What does it mean? How can Mara be Mavis? Ki Gashmis nika Mavis ra. Gashmis is called death and evil. She called it an ifsa because eventually everything in the Gashmistic world is never a permanency. There's no, the world is 6,000 years. There's no permanency to world. Gashmis, and we learned, even the rivers dry, that, that dry up once in seven years are not real existence even when they're existing. So therefore, Gashmi is, is called Mavis. It's not real existence. But Ruchni is called Chayim V'teik. Like it's how Kain Tzarechli is Bechin is Mardar or Meridus. Stop it at Yud Gimel. Therefore, there has to be the level of Mardar and Meridus. Memashinim Shechach Gashmi. In other words, he says like this. Mother means medidus, bitterness. What is the bitterness from? From the word mavis, that the Jew runs after Gashmias. In other words, it comes to a point, and this is Aveda, yeah, we're not there yet. Let's not discuss even when we're going to get there. But a Jew has to, the ideal level of Aveda of a Jew is that he feels bitter from the fact that he's interested in Gashmias. Then you show that you're really connected to Hashem. Otherwise, you're connected to Gashmis. Like Dr. Rebbe says in Tanya about a tzaddik and a benini, that if you love Hashem, then you hate evil. You don't hate evil, that means you don't love Hashem. It's interconnected because they're opposites. So if you love Hashem, you hate evil. If you hate, if you love evil, then you, don't, you, you know, well, you don't like Hashem. Let's put it that way. So he says what Darizal is saying 
that martyr equals mavis because the meridus has to be from the fact, and this has to bother the Jew. In other words, not only are they not interested in Gashmias, but it bothers them that they're interested in Gashmias. I don't see the connection between martyr and mavis. Same the gematria. No, the Meridus comes from the fact that the person's running after Gashmias. He says, Mimashinim Shachach Gashmias. From the fact that the person's running after Gashmias, this is what makes him bitter. This is what bothers him. That's like Mavis. That is Mavis. That level of Meridus can only be now. But lots of love, when Kedush is revealed and evil doesn't exist, so what are you going to be bitter from? Um, meaning, by the way, it doesn't mean he says then will be Gashmis also, but not the Gashmis of now that's Mavis. In other words, as we learned in many other places, Gashmis is revealing a deeper level of godliness than the Ruchnius does. So, what's the problem with Gashmis? Why is Gashmis now called Mavis? Because now we're into the Gashmias of it, into the death of it, into the evil of Gashmias. But the Asalave, when death will be removed from the world, and then a person, get not, and he says, clear, not the Gashmias won't be. El Gashmias Mailum master. And that's what it says. Hashem Dimo, where say the Pasuk, Hashem will erase the tears, Dimo. So it says, Dimo. Asher Dima, no, I'm saying Dima is Bigmatir Kuf Chof. The word Dima, tears, Dalit Mem equals the 120, which are the 120 Tziruf and Mevelokim, Shemehem Nimshach, Helen Vehester. Okay, whatever. You know, there's combinations of letters. Two letters make two combinations, three letters make six combinations. Okay. Elokim makes 120 combinations. So there's called the, the Kuvchov in Kabbalah, it says, there's Kuvchov Tzirufi Shem Elokim. But it's, and that's the numerical value of Dima. So it says, Umach Hashem is Dima. Hashem is going to erase the tear, meaning that concealment of Elokim, the 120 concealments of Elokim, is not going to exist anymore. What about the Gashmi That's called Gashmi is elevating the Gashmi, it's from the Mavis. But that's only, that Aveda he's saying could only be now. Because now the Aveda is that the Meridus should be from the Gashmis, meaning the whole purpose of Gashmis is, is only to elevate it, nothing else. No personal gratification or nothing. To elevate the Gashmis. How can you hate it and then make it to do as a vehicle for Kiddush Hashem? He's not, he's, because it depends what we're hating. Not the Gashmis, you have to hate not the physical object, but the taiva of the Gashmis, the enjoyment of Gashmis for personal gratification. When Rabbi Yudha Nasi was the richest man, yeah, uh, now you know if it's Bill Gates or Elon Musk, or, but he was that of his generation, yeah? Obviously he had comfortable beds, comfortable food, comfortable everything, yeah? Maybe he didn't have a Tesla, but he had a good horse and buggy, I'm sure, yeah? And yet on his deathbed, when nobody plays games, he picked up his head, I mean his finger, his hand, it's Shvua, and he said, I swear, I didn't enjoy this world, not even a small finger, not even a pinky finger's worth. What do you mean, he didn't have all that stuff? By him, that was nothing. It was only as a vehicle to serve Hashem. Why is it that people put a sack of gold or money in front of them when they're studying Torah? Because the, the, the Rabbeinu Tam did it, he said, some chsedek did it. Why? Because when you see money, you feel good. The Gashmis makes you feel good. No, it makes you feel good. Let me ask you a question. Just think, use your brain a second, which we never do. I know, not you. you, you a tzaddik has a yetzara? Tzaddik no. Gomer has a yetzara? No, no. What is Shaykh a taiva by him? Money makes him feel good. What does that mean? When we, when we, when we see money, not somebody else's money, 
Somebody else's money makes us jealous. When we see our money, yeah, it makes us feel good. What is the f good feeling? Oh, I can buy whatever I want. That's not Kedusha, that's Klippa. Total Klippa. Yeah, that's not what they... <laughs> so, Rabbi Yudha Nasi saw the money as a vehicle to write Shas, I mean Mishnah, and to support the hundreds of, of Tamina Chum for who knows how many years to be able to compile Mishnah. That's, what's made him that's what made him feel good. No, the Meridus is when, when the bitterness that a person is involved in Gashmi. Thank you, Correct. Thank you. Gashmi is the reason we all do it, use it. Boy, Kal. Boy, Chosen. What? You want to join the class? Who, me? No. Shmuel already is. I know. God, God created us for clarity to these kind of physical and supposedly we call it vain, but they derive certain pleasure from this Gashmi. Uh, the reason why, we mentioned already, the reason why, it says in Svarim, why did Hashem make two things in a human's life very uh, type, uh, very uh, enjoyable? Yeah. It's Rela marital relationships and food. What are the two main things in people's life? Food and marital relationships. Possessing wealth. Okay, now, why? So it says in Psalm like this. If a person wouldn't lust food, they wouldn't, then nobody would eat. Then they would not elevate all the sparks of Kedusha that exists in the food. So Hashem made that a person should desire to eat food, because otherwise, you won't elevate the food. If somebody wouldn't have enjoyment in marital relations, they wouldn't have children. So therefore, because those two things are so vital in life, elevating all the sparks of Kedusha, to Kedusha, not lowering it into Klippa, because in Tanya, al Rebbe says, when you do it for, for personal uh, taiva, so the bottom line is, then you lower it into Klippa. You're not elevating it into Kedusha. But in saying, those two things, they wish to made a taiva. Now, the Gemara says, one second, the med, the med, not the med, the med says the world wasn't worthy for Zahav, for gold. The world wasn't worthy to have gold. Why did they wish to make gold in the world? Because he needed gold for the Mishka. So because he needed gold for the Mishka, they already dumped it into the world. But that's their Chagav, to elevate the world. So now we have the Pshachira, because now Mavis exists, Kashmir exists, Kaivis exists, which are all dead. Death, because other, we need pechida. Because the fact that's the concept of dinner Because we, if we wouldn't have free choice to do good or bad, and we would only be programmed to do good, then good is worthless. We wouldn't be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Oh, I can come to and praying and listening to me sometimes torture, but it's still We're not talking about sadikim like you. <laughs> talking about normal people. Oh, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm more serious than you think I am. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay. Similar to the concept that Lord of Love Hashem is going to take out the sun from the, from the protective shield. Then it's impossible to have the concept of modern. Why? Because Meridus is because we're so far, we're dead. Meaning we're not, we're disconnected from Hashem, which is the union of Atam and Veikam, Chaim Kol Chamayim. Hashem is the ultimate life. Ruchni is the ultimate life. <coughs> and he says, then you can't have modern. Before Mavis, Kiyos Bila Mavis, Beruchni is Veichem Begashmet. That means, he says even more, even spiritual death won't be. This physical death and this spiritual death. I.e., a person doesn't have Veda, spiritual death. So this explains, spiritual death is worse than physical death. Physical death, anyway, I'll be living 120 years. See, just dying earlier. Ruchni is eternal. 
So when you kill Ruchnius, when you kill yourself by Ruchnius, it's a much greater death than killing yourself by Gashmius, because Gashmius is not a real life anyway to begin with. Like the famous Rabbeinu B'chai at the beginning of Chumash, Rabbeinu B'chai says, Hatinik yabish. A child, as soon as they're born, begins to dry up. That means, in simple English, a child, as soon as they're born, they begin to die. Why? Because the second you're born, you have 120 years of life. You're a day old, you have only 119, 364 days left to live. So you begin the... the they say. The whole life, the whole life by, by regular people is a preparation for death. Why? Okay, a toddler, you're preparing them to go to school. School is elementary to high school, to, 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 go, to, get, to go to college, let's say, and get a job. The purpose of a job is to get money. What's the purpose of having money? That when you retire, you should have money. And what's the much retirement? Retirement is a preparation for death. So the whole life, from the second you're born, is actually different stages of preparation for death. If you think about it, it's true. That's for insurance. Huh? Why buy insurance? This, that. Yeah. B'chein b'chein matzah. The same thing, matzah, shu'en yinashimer me'achometz, e'en shaykh rak achshav. Now, to, be, to guard from chometz is only now. Our loss of love is going to be actually his, but once there's no evil, it's like in Mitzrayim, yeah? When the Ebersh did Nigla Alem, Melch Malchim, Melchim, Makadish Baruch, this great revelation of Elokus, then God, then, then Chomets couldn't be. Kilay Chomets, it can't be Chomets. So loss of love is going to even be much more. The Yashgash may cloud, it won't come to Chomets. Machmets a bitul. Also, that now he learned before that when Kedusha comes into Gashmis, it could be a nourishment for Klippa, which it really is. Think about it. You have Gashmis, yeah? People want Gashmis. Now, in this Gashmis is the sparks of Alokos. Correct? So now. The person, when they eat for taiva, they do things for taiva, not for Hashem Shemaim, not to elevate the food. So what happens? They're taking that spark of Kedusha and lowering it into Sholosh Kip Satsumeis. To total evil. They're lowering it from Kripa Snuggin to total evil. That means Gashmi is now, and the taiva of Gashmi is now, allows the spark of Kedusha to go into total evil. And that's the free choice. To elevate it or to dump it. Like it says in Chesidus, the expression that when a Jew is about to touch klipas neiga, okay? In other words, let's say you're about to touch a piece of food, kosher food, klipas neiga, yeah? Until you touch it, it's klipas neiga. The second you touch it, it either goes up or down. It either goes to Kedusha by elevating it or it goes into Shol Shkip Satsumeis for That's the... But where is evil coming through? I mean, evil is when you kill somebody and you do something. That's the Webster... That's the Webster... That's the Webster definition of evil. Again, what is the... The Webster word? definition... You know Webster Dictionary? You ever hear it? Is... The definition of evil in the Webster Dictionary. Yes. Hurting somebody, killing somebody. Fine, yeah. Now, is having an evil thought evil? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, in Judaism, yes. yes. Oh, in Judaism. Why in Judaism? Because am I hurting? If I think I want to hurt you, yeah? Physically, am I hurting you? You don't even know about it. Right. Correct? Am I hurting you? I just said according to Judaism. So that's what I'm saying. You're asking me uh, what's the definition of evil. <laughs> evil, if I have an improper thought, improper feeling, that's total evil. But lasting food is evil? Yeah. Because what are you feeding? You're only feeding your gashmias with it. But you're not, not God hurting. made it. God made it as a vehicle to serve him. And instead of using it as a vehicle to serve him, I'm using it as a vehicle to serve myself. But I'm not hurting anybody. 
If I have an evil thought, is it that evil? Yes. But, but I'm not hurting you. Correct. So why is it evil? In Chesidah, Zalt Rebbe says in Perek Vav of well, Tanya, because, because evil's definition is anything that's not holy. You get punished Rabbi, for Rabbi? because when you cultivate some kind of hatred toward you, Not hatred, that's I the just think... the foundation of doing, bringing to action. But if you actually, the, the, the action is actually eating something that is maybe unhealthy, it's not evil. In the world of thought, thought is action. Yeah, but you get punished for it, Rabbi? Correct. That's fine. If I think... But One minute. Ult- There's ultimately, if, if the thought comes to realization, you're hurting somebody. Then but eating something that is... Uh, that, that eating a cheeseburger... A joy. Eating good. cheeseburger if I really enjoy it. Is good or bad? As a Jew, is bad. Why? Because you're commanded... Did I hurt you? You're commanded not to. So? I'm not hurting anybody. It's the beginning. It's a seed of that. What movie. seed? What? What? What's wrong with what I'm saying? Nothing's wrong with you saying, except it's not right. What's not right? If it's not right, it's Why wrong. Why you just dismiss that thing, Haka China? I mean, what? what just Haka articulate China. yourself. What is it exactly? I'm explaining to you, because according to Taylor, anything which is not holy is evil. The definition. The definition of evil in Tatum. So I'm explaining to you. I thought we were learning Buddhism here. The definition okay. of evil is anything which is not holy. In other words, in the secular world, the definition of evil is when it's actively evil. I'm hurting you. I'm hurting myself. Yes. Now let me ask you a question. If a person hurts themselves, I cut myself. I they beat. do that. I know. Is that evil or good? It's on purpose. Why is it evil? Am I hurting you? I'm hurting myself. What's your business? Why I could do whatever I want. I mean, no, no, why? No, no, it's very clear. Why is that evil? Why is no? Many religions have you, you, you torture yourself. You used to bring the kids and burn the kids on the fire. Okay. Do you get punished if a person has an evil thought? Yes. In, in, in the Nishamit, it's a blemish. You don't get punished in this world because this world is an action world. And you, only get, you don't get punished for speech either. If I say, I'm, God forbid, somebody says, I'm going to kill you. Do the courts put lock them up? No. But in Taylor, in the world of speech, you actually kill them. What's evil about me liking this chocolate right now? They do. Um... um What's wrong with that? No, really. For you, it's not wrong. 